Hi, this is Theo from parkablocks.com. In one of the earlier videos, someone asked me how I draw windows for buildings in my sketches. For example, this one, like how do I actually draw windows like this? So for today's drawing tutorial, I will show you how I draw three different types of windows. So this is going to be my first example. This photo was shot on ground level. Uh, I can tell because I can see the bot the top of the window here, this side here, and the top here because it's recessed inside. I can see these three parts here. And the camera man is probably standing here, somewhere around here, shooting there. That's why he cannot see this uh, hidden side of the wall here. But you can see this side, this side, and this side. Now when I draw windows like this, I depending on how much detail I want to put. So if this window is going to take up a small portion of my sketch, then I'm not going to worry so much about the detail. But if this window is going to be huge, like if I'm going to fill a huge area here, then I will pay a bit more attention to all the little details. So I'm going to draw this window quite big today. Uh, let me draw the frame first, which is this part. By the way, this window is recessed into the wall, so it has additional depth. This pen is the Pentel, I think it's a Pentel. It's a Tradio Stylo pen, that's the name of the pen. I'm using this because it's quite thick, so that it can be captured properly on the camera. So as I move down here, this line is tilting a bit, tilts a bit downwards like this. All right, this window is recessed. I need to find out where and how much. So usually when I'm drawing uh, windows like this, I pay attention to the proportion of this side here, to the glass panel, and to this glass panel here. And the middle section of the window is actually here, more towards the right side. So I have this glass panel which is larger than this uh, area, of, area of the wall here. And this area here is about the same proportion as this glass panel here. So that is something I want to take note of. And this distance here is about the same distance here so I when I draw I need to pay attention to all that so I'm just going to draw a line down like this and move it to this side and draw a line down like this and move it here all right so that I can see the top of this uh, sail here. Okay, now I can draw the glass panels and the frame that's holding the glass panel. Hmm, oh, remember just now I talked about the proportion. This side here is bigger than this side because part of this side is covered by the edge here. So the center line is somewhere around here. I want to pay attention to that. So when I draw, I want to draw it like this. Maybe I'll put a dot there first. I'll start here, go all the way up, come down here, move all the way down. There is no rails for this particular window so I can draw it all the way down here. And for the glass panel on the right side, something like this. So this glass panel should be smaller than this glass panel. That is the most essential part. And now that I have this, I can draw the grills. Make sure to divide the windows properly into thirds. So it'll be something like this. And something like this. This is not a very difficult window to draw, but because I've drawn it so big, it looks a bit um, simple. So I can still go in to add in additional details, like additional lines to make the window more three-dimensional. 
of course if you draw the windows smaller you don't have to do all this this is just to give it a bit more detail I also um, decided not to draw this part here the additional recess into the window okay this is the first window I'm going to draw let me move on to the next window I'll leave this for the last because this is very challenging so sometimes we have a lot of windows and in this case um, I'm going to draw this section here there are a few things to note first of all the perspective this is quite tricky um, because the perspective is actually quite extreme if I take a look at the roof it's actually horizontal oops it's actually horizontal and then it tilts downwards these are the vertical lines so if I need to get the roof correct I need to make sure that I draw this horizontally I'm just going to do a very um, quick sketch of this roof all right so I have the general shape of the, the roof of the window here usually I will draw the general shape first before I put the windows into the general shape I do this because I want to uh, know how the window is going to fit into the shape so when I take a look at this window here the space between the right side of the window versus this edge is is very close same thing for this side here and this edge here it hides the the frame of the window slightly so you cannot see that but here you get to see the left side of the window frame so when I'm drawing I need to put make sure that this rectangle has a very small space towards the edge and uh, this looks like a window sill that is extruding out so I want to extrude that out perhaps I want to draw that in as well because um, draw that in first because that's quite easy to draw okay so now I can proceed to draw the windows let me draw the top of the window first part of this window is concealed so I just leave it as it is Okay, so it's something like this. Oops. And if you want to make it more three dimensional, you can add in that additional recess to give the frame some thickness. So it's something like this. If I were to draw this very, very small, then um, this is what I'm going to, this is how I'm going to draw it. I'm just going to draw it as a rectangle like this with a very thin strip uh, below Oops. and the windows I'll just divide them into one two three and this horizontal put this horizontal like this to give it additional depth I'm going to uh, draw, make this line here a bit thicker and this line here a bit thicker because I can get to see the side of the uh, windows here so this is my simplified version and this is the more detailed version if you uh, need to draw a lot of, sorry if you need to draw a lot of windows um, I find that it's quite useful if you use a pencil to just basically draw the line, the guiding lines first. Like for example, if you want to draw all the windows here, you can draw guiding lines first like this, and then divide, divide out. So 
so you can draw the windows between the guiding lines. The guiding lines are quite useful. So for this last example, I'm going to show you how you use those guiding lines in pencils. These are windows from shop houses here in Singapore. They are very complicated because there are a lot of details. There are additional pillars, there's the shutter, there's this uh, semicircle thing going on. Also for the shutters, there are a lot of horizontal lines. And also the perspective of this is um, diagonal and you can see here additional details at the bottom. So I'm not going to draw all this detail, I'm just going to focus on this main part here. And just now I was talking about how you can use pencils to do the, the guiding lines. So I'm going to use the pencil to draw guiding lines to represent this edge here and this bottom edge here. So it will be something like this. Like this. Oops, they are drawing too light. And for the peeler, uh, perhaps the right edge of the peeler, I'm going to draw it like this. And this pillar is how many pillars away? Perhaps one, one, two, one and a half pillars away. So I'm going to draw this pillar like this. And the next pillar is one and a half pillars away. It helps like this. And you see here this additional part that comes out. So I'm going to draw that in as well with pencil. So this. And this semicircle thing, the topmost part is actually here on the right side. And it's um, quite close to this edge here. So it's supposed to be somewhere around here. So I can start from here and go down to here. And this point here is somewhere around here. And start here and come here. All right. I think I have pretty much the pencil lines out. So now I'm going to draw with the pen. I'm going to draw this pillar first. So this pillar comes out slightly. I'm just going to draw the general volume and not worry so much about the details. So this pillar goes all the way down. There's this line here. There's a thickness to this pillar, so I'm going to draw it all the way down like this. And there's some carvings. Okay, just draw it, just doodle. Now this is where it gets very interesting. This shutter here. It's about I would say the same same thickness, same width as this pillar, maybe slightly wider. And we have to measure the top angle, which is almost horizontal. And it comes up from here. It goes all the way down. It intersects here. So we intersect it there. And this part here, these two parts are equal parts. But this part here is longer. So uh, when I draw, I need to be aware of that. Also, we see the side of this shutter here. We see this part here. Sorry, this part here. But we don't see it on the left side because it's blocked by this pillar. So when I'm drawing, I need to take note of that. So it helps out end it here. And here. And this last one will be here. There are one, two, three, four, four lines. So I have one, two, three, four. I want to make this last line a bit darker. Same thing here. Sometimes if you have a lot of uh, these lines, you want to uh, make sure that they are evenly spaced out. You can start by drawing from the middle here. 
So right here there are one, two, three, four. Um, so this should be a two. This should be a three. This should be a four, and this is the one. I make this last line a bit thicker. I also want to give some additional detail to this part here. So this is the additional detail. Okay. Now for this window here, this window is not horizontal, this tilts up a bit like this. It's actually this angle here, this angle here is actually the same angle as this angle here. So I want to draw from here like this. Move all the way down. And there is this part here which is in color I want to draw that in as well okay and this angle is the same as this angle so it's going to be something like this there is some volume to some thickness to this shutter so I want to give that additional thickness here And the back of this shutter is not very clear, but it's quite similar to this, so I'm just going to follow this pattern. Three. And now I want to draw this side. So we have this semicircle thing going on, and this line that comes at this angle like this. This is the other pillar that I was talking about earlier. It comes down like this. You don't see much of this pillar because most of it is covered by the shuttle. So when drawing, you have to pay attention to all the different proportions like how big is this compared to the shutter and the different positionings. So this goes down like this, all the way down. And this comes out. this and now I can finish off this semicircle part so I also want to draw the windows here which is sort of like a radio radio uh, pattern Here I'm not too accurate. This is a Sailor brush pen. I have a text review for this. I'm going to put that in the video description so they can check it out. So I'm going to darken this part here. For the purpose of this sketch, I'm using brush pen, but Usually I use watercolor. This is very convenient for putting in the dark or shadow areas. I'm not going to color the back of this shutter black. I'm just going to color this part here. So now with the brush pen with the dark areas, it makes the drawing looks more uh, more contrast, it has more contrast and it's easier to read. Let's take a look at some examples from my sketchbook. So this is also a shop house. For this sketch I drew in the top line here first and the bottom line, the perspective line and then I divide the shop houses using the main pillars and after I have each shop house I divide them to the windows and then I draw in the windows and put in the horizontal lines like this so it's easier to draw the general shape divide it up and then further divide it up and then add in the details
this is uh, another sketch that I drew a few months ago um, depending on how big the windows is sometimes I will just represent them with a small rectangle like this and also I don't count the number of windows I'm very sure this particular residential block here has more than seven windows at one on one floor so here I just put in drew in seven windows and after I drew in the rectangle like this to give it additional contrast I added some depths of watercolor so the windows here are very small I don't need to add a lot of details and when I move to the right side here the windows that are in the foreground they are bigger so here I drew in additional details to show that these windows are actually recessed into the wall and I also drew in the glass panels so that um, they can be seen this is another sketch of uh, shop houses here I try to fit in as much detail as I possibly can so again drawing the general shape the large or vertical rectangle and subdivide it then drawing the horizontal lines and drawing the little um, glass panels here now for this particular sketch it's done in a rather simplistic style for the windows here again vertical rectangles I use horizontal lines quick lines to represent that they are shutters as I move to the background I represent these windows with just one vertical rectangle like this and even further into the background some of these windows are just being represented by one stroke of vertical lines this is another example with uh, foreground and background so the perspective is going somewhere like this vanishing point is here so the shop houses here that are in the background the windows are very small not a lot of details but for the windows that are quite big on the page for example this window here takes up quite a big portion i need to draw in additional details like i provided the lines here to represent that this windows is actually recessed into the wall for the shutter here i drew in the extra line here to give it additional volume you can see here that there is this little detail here this is a vertical rectangle and inside this vertical rectangle there's another rectangle because i actually have space to draw in that detail and here we have the handle and this part here is really dark that's why i um, did not draw in a lot of detail because i cannot see what i'm drawing so I just colored this whole, whole thing in dark. Here's another example with uh, building with a lot of uh, windows. Same thing, drawing the big shape, then use the lines, the cross section lines to represent the grills. I want to point your attention to this area here. This uh, semicircle part. This is actually recessed into the wall so I drew in an additional line here and then I drew in the cross section line so this part here is very important because it shows that it has some volume and it goes into the wall the same applies to this uh, here as well we have the outer edge and we have the inner edge here and this is my most recent example and tutorial uh, drawing the big shapes first and drawing the little shapes and the detail when i'm drawing windows like this uh, if i draw something like this and i draw the details when i realize that i don't have um, enough spa space to draw the things that i want i just leave it as it is so that is uh, simplification sometimes you don't even need to use ink lines like this to represent windows for example buildings that are much further back into the background i tend not to use ink lines because um, when you think about it if this line is this thick for buildings in the foreground 
this line is going to be much thinner for buildings in the background because of perspective things appear to be sh uh, smaller so when it goes into the far background you are not going to be able to see these lines that's why I don't draw them in also if I were to draw them in it's going to um, create contrast and it's going to draw the viewer's eye to this part here which is not something that I want because this building is in the background so for this uh, cylindrical building I just use depths of watercolor to represent the windows there are a lot of flaws but here I just did a very simplified version of it there are maybe twice the number of flaws here but because my watercolor brush is quite big I'm not able to do those very thin lines like that but this is just an impression of the building so that's how I draw windows if the subject is the window alone then I will put in more details but if the window is just a supporting row to a bigger building or a bigger scene then I usually just draw windows as a very simple rectangle with some minor details I think that's all for today's video tutorial if you have any questions do feel free to post them in the comment section below I will also post a link to other tutorials that I have I have created a lot of tutorials so you might want to check those out as well thanks for watching see you in the next video bye